99.99% of them are apostate on some level. Does that mean I think I've got everything figured out and I'm the purveyor of all knowledge? No, it doesn't. I learn, I learn things every day still. But you need to humble yourself before God because the Bible says to this man will I look to of him that is a con contrite and a humble spirit and tremble at my word, Isaiah 66. Be, a, be of a humble and contrite spirit. Do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these things hang all the law and the commandments, Jesus said. By this they will know that you are essentially believers and Christians when they see your love for the brethren. Unfortunately, it's hard to have love for the brethren because there's hardly seems like there's hardly any around. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about when you... I'm not saying the people aren't listening to this aren't, but I mean, just out in general public. And you, you look at the deceptions that so many people are under and they have no love for the truth and they have no interest in coming out of this stuff. I don't understand it. So yeah, he believed. He believed that uh, if they're sincere in their religion, the Hindus they'll they'll be accepted by God. Sure. Well, the Bible certainly says not. Ephesians chapter two tells us the condition of every person outside of regenerating faith in Jesus Christ. He is dead in trespasses and sins. He is controlled by. And living according to the workings of the devil. He's a child of disobedience. He's dominated by the flesh. He's a child of wrath. He's without Christ. He's an alien and stranger from the covenant of God. He's without hope. He's without God in the world. And he is far off from God. That's what the Bible says about him. Oh, but we can't say that. That wouldn't be politically correct. We may lose converts. If you've got converts like that, let me tell you something. They're not converted. You're just taking them to hell along with yourself. And their blood is going to be required at your hands. Whew. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ has already settled this matter long ago. Long before the, even the pennings of, of Ephesians. In his conversation with Nicodemus, the Lord said categorically, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 33. Nicodemus was a very sincere religious Jew. And if any category of person could have gone to heaven without being born again, it would have been people like him. But Christ said it won't happen. Furthermore, Lewis is teaching that salvation can be achieved by works and religious seeking, and that, and that is another false gospel that is cursed of God in the book of Galatians, where it says, I marvel that ye be so soon removed from him that called you under the grace of Christ. Remember, you see, by grace, through faith, and that not of yourselves, is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I marvel that ye be so soon removed from him that called you under the grace of Christ, unto another gospel. This whole thing with C.S. Lewis boils down to him espousing another gospel. Which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Isn't that what we're talking about today? A absolute perversion of the gospel of Christ? But though, though we, or an angel from heaven, look, they say here, but though we, and I say that about myself, if I, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which ye have preached unto you, let him be accursed. They said, let myself be accursed if I preach another gospel to you, which you have not heard from heaven. I would say that to myself. Don't follow men. Follow the word of God. That was from Galatians 1, 6-8. There is only one true gospel, and that is salvation through repentance and faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, His death, burial, and resurrection... But there are many false gospels, and all claim that a man can be saved in some sense by good works. Every There's only two religions I've said this before. There's all your works-based isms, Catholicism, Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, Mormonism, all these isms. You can say through good works. And then there's Bible-believing Christianity, which says you're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Here's another article. Um entitled C.S. Lewis the Heretic. <clears throat> Lewis was an unwilling convert. You may picture me alone in a room in Magdalen, night after night, feeling whenever my mind lifted for even a second from my work, the steady, unrelenting reproach of him whom I so earnestly desired not to meet. This is from his own writings. This is C.S. Lewis saying this. 
He's saying, I earnestly desired not to meet. Then he goes on to say, that which I greatly feared had at last come upon me. Thank you. In 1929, I gave in and admitted that God was God. Wow. Thanks, C.S. And knelt and prayed, perhaps that night, the most dejected and reluctant convert in all of England. Claiming to believe in God is not a conversion, number one. (laughs) A lot of people do that. James 2.19 says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Who cares? about the, the, the devils believe. Satan believes in God. Satan believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Doesn't get you to heaven. Claiming to believe in God is not conversion. What's more, anyone who has ever been truly born again knows that emotions that come to mind are not dejection and reluctance to having do so. I know it wasn't for me when I found out about this, when I found out about salvation, when I read that book I mentioned earlier. I, I, I can't relate to what he's saying here at all. It doesn't make any sense. And I think if you talk to the vast majority of most Christians, they're going to say that they're the most reluctant convert. You know what? You don't come to Christ that way. The Bible says unless you come to Him as a little child, you know what I mean? You not see the kingdom of God. You come to Him meekly and humbly and thanking Him for the salvation that He's given you, not as a dejected and reluctant convert. Oh man, all my fun's all over now. I can't live like the devil anymore. You're not saved, if that's your attitude. No. I'm sorry. That doesn't work that way. And unless the Holy Spirit draw the man, he's not saved anyway. That's why, you know, seek him while he may be found. There's many people that have been on their deathbed, that had planned on getting saved on their deathbed, and they found when the time came, they couldn't get saved. Because the Spirit was not there anymore to draw them. They had their chance. You don't just get saved when you want to get saved. You get saved when the Holy Spirit is there to draw you. But you remember, everybody wants their bro cream religion. A little dabble do you. They want to have it their way. Burger King religion. Have it your way and have it now. Doesn't work that way with the Lord. Be thankful that you have an opportunity to get saved. Okay, so this next part is that Lewis, C.S. Lewis believed in the power and use of spells, like witchcraft spells. Lewis said that a spell is needed to overcome enchantment of the world. You and I have the need, of, this is a quote, you and I have need of the strongest spell that can be found to wake us from the evil enchantments of the world of worldliness, as though all of his writings were indoctrinating you into worldliness. The world of occult fantasy. If that's not the definition of worldliness, I don't know what is. So we need the strongest spell that can be found to wake us from the enchantment, the evil enchantment of worldliness. So we need a good spell to wake us from the evil. See, it's about good and bad witchcraft. God is not in the business of providing spells to break enchantments. This quote shows where much of Narnia's doctrine comes from. Uh, 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. See, faith is what overcomes things. Putting on the full armor of God. Okay? Not going out and getting some spell so we can break the evil enchantments on our life. Lewis also said, um, many, uh, many sincere unbelievers may go to heaven. Well, we've already read those quotes. If the good pagans are going to heaven anyway, why in the world are we spending our time and money and sending out missionaries and preaching the gospel? Speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible clearly tells us that there is only one way to be saved. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Uh, Lewis also said we're saved according to works. This is a quote from one of his books page 62 and 63. Um, <clears throat> there are three things that spread the Christ life to us. This is what he says. Baptism, belief, 
and that mysterious action which different Christians call by different names, the Holy Communion, the Mass, or the Lord's Supper. End of quote. Now, Titus 3.5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us, by the washing of regeneration, and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Added to this, He says that in the next life, quote, There will be every occasion for being the sort of people that we can become only as a result of of doing such acts here. End of quote. So he literally believed that the only way to be that was the only way to be saved. In other words, we're um, in other words, when he says this quote, there will be every occasion for being the sort of people that we can become only as a result of doing such acts here. The such acts that he was talking about were the act of baptism, belief, and the mysterious action of either the Holy Communion, the Mass, or the Lord's Supper. Which, um, when we talk about Holy Communion and the Mass, we're talking about the um, typical reference is, is into um, the... Uh, uh, Catholicism and Orthodox religions, where they, that's what they actually call it, okay? Which, in, in particularly the Catholic religion, they believe in the doctrine of transubstantiation, where the wine and the wafer are actually transformed into the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ. And this is how they get their sins atoned for every week when they go and they take Mass. Okay, because by transforming it, supposedly the priest has this power to, to into the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ, then they're atoning for their sins every week over and over and over again. So therefore they can go out and live like the devil the other six days, come back, do their auricular confession, do their uh, seven sacraments, take the Mass, and feel all good about themselves. They've got their dose of real cream religion, and everybody comes away happy. The Catholic Church gets richer. They maintain the control over the duped masses, and the and the and the Catholics feel like, oh, we've we you know we're clean now for this week. Let's go live like the devil in between. That's what that's what it's all about. So he literally believed this was the only way to be saved. Lewis was also wiping out the difference between the Lord's Supper of true Christians and the Roman Catholic Mass. He was just lumping them all together. Okay? He lumps all beliefs about it into one and claims it is part of salvation as well as calling Roman Catholics Christians. Lewis did not consider himself a new man. A new creature in Christ. Now, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He believed that there is a purgatory after death in which we will be purified. Where does he say that? Um, well, he says it on page 108, 172, 174, 175, and 182 of this particular book we're quoting from. Um, he says, Whatever inconceivable purification whatever inconceivable purification it may cost you after death. So we, we pay for our sins after death. Now, 2 Corinthians 5.6 says, Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So once you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. You don't go to, you're either, if you're a born-again Christian, you are at least. You know, if you're not, you go to hell. If you are, you go to heaven. That's it. There's only two options. Lewis was a humanist, seeing man as being potentially good. This is a quote from him. He says, safety and happiness can only come, he said it can only come, from individuals, classes, and nations being honest and fair and kind to each other. Sounds like the United Nations. The study we just did, that's what they're saying too. we got to all come together as one big happy family, guys. Whereas Psalm 4.8 says, I will look, both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me to dwell in safety. See, God's the, he's, he's our strong tower. Under, under, the, under the shelter of his wings will we make a refuge while these calamities be overpassed. But he's saying safety and happiness can come from individuals and classes and nations. Being honest and fair and kind to each other. Well, if they were true born-again Christians,